friends you all are welcome to uh, unit 2 chapter 3 breath first search in our previous videos we have discussed in say chapter 1 and 2 that what is state space search and how we can generate a specific problem in artificial intelligence and then we have discussed that uh, what is the need of searching and then in second chapter we have discussed what are the different kind of strategies that we can use for searching uh, for solving a problem in artificial intelligence. So like uh, uninformed search and informed search strategies that we have discussed in second chapter. So if you haven't watched those chapters before, it is recommended to watch them at least once so that you could be uh, much aware about the techniques and technologies that we are going to discuss in later on chapters. So in this specific chapter, we are going to discuss one of the uh, very common uninformed search strategy that is breadth first search. So guys, as we have discussed that in uninformed search strategies, we blindly follow the path. We just uh, start from a root node and then we move towards either left or right. It, it basically doesn't matter because we don't have any specific information that at, at which direction we have to move or which node we have to select for expansion. So as BFS is also an uninformed search strategy, what we do is we at first select the root node as you can see in this case we have a as the root node g are different goal nodes that is being displayed in different uh, places because uh, we have we just have converted a graph into tree that's why we are seeing g in different places and some other nodes like d and d in two different places and so on so guys how breadth first search works at first the root is being selected so initially the fringe contains only fringe is basically an open list that will have uh, different nodes that we will use for placing the nodes and then checking and then generating their successors one by one so at first what we did we just place uh, the root node that is a in the fringe so currently the fringe is having a with it okay then after that in second step what will happen we will remove a we will pick A from the fringe and then we will see that what are its successors. As you can see in this diagram that A is having B and C as its successors. So they will be added in the fringe and as well as we will remove the uh, root node from there. After that, what we will pick? We will pick B from here. B is now the main node. Main node. So B will be picked and it will be checked at what are its successors. Its successors are D and E. Okay, so D and E are taken up from the tree structure and they has been added to the right side of the current node. So C is there. We are adding it towards the right, right position of this one. Okay, so this is important that where we are placing these nodes. In breadth for search, these nodes are being placed towards the right direction of the current node. Now C is there. What we will pick? We will pick C from here and we will see what are its uh, child's. You can see from this diagram, C is having D and G as its children. So D and G will be picked and where they should be placed? Definitely, they should be placed at the right side after E. That means we will have D, E and then D, G as you can see here. So this will be the node that we will have in fringe. Okay, then what we will pick now? The very first node of this fringe that is D. We will expand it. We will find the successors of this D that is C and F. And these C and F will again be placed after this one, after this G. So the new fringe list, we will have E, D, G, then C and F. Okay. Uh, as you can see in the next diagram, yeah, C and F is being placed over here. Right. After that, E will be picked. This E is blank. It do not have any, uh, it's, it's basically a leaf node. It do not have any successors with it. So we will just remove it from the fringe and we will pick D from here. Now when the D will be picked, D is having successors B and F and then again we will choose them. We will pick them up. Okay. Like this one. B and F. B and F is being selected and they have been added towards the right portion of this one. Now G is there. We will pick G. But now as you can see that G is a goal node. So as G is a goal node, here your program or your algorithm will stop because it has found whatever it need to find. So the algorithm returns the path. What's the path? That is A, C and G. Okay, it will follow the parent pointers of the node corresponding to G and then the algorithm will terminate. So this will be the path that you get. Right, so guys, this was basically about breadth first search. Uh, what we do in breadth first search is 
uh, we just celebrated once more. So we started with the root node, then we move towards the breadth portion of this one. That means A, then B and C, then B, D and E, then C, D and G. Means we will pick the root node, we will pick its successors, and we will add the successors of the current node towards the right direction of any node. So in that way, we will move this loop, we will keep this move continuing till we are not getting the goal node. And once we get the goal node, that, that's the place where the algorithm will terminate. So this is enough for this video lecture. In next video, we will discuss what depth first search is. Thank you very much.